James Sykes, CEO, President, Director of Baseload Energy, here to give you a technical and unique perspective on what I see from, you know, the dream, the the dream behind this merger between Baseload and Forum to create Geiger Energy. I think it this is quite an amazing thing, and I'm going to start that dream by looking at this image. You can consider a Rorschach test. It is. It's, it's a really messed up image. There's a lot of things going on here, but my eyes, I see nothing but huge success potential here. And to really help you understand what I'm seeing in this image, that's a gravity image, by the way. It's the forum's gravity image of Aberdeen. I'm going to tell you about a story. Back in 2012, December of 2012, I made a phone call to a wonderful man, Mr. Lee Courier of Next Gen Energy, and just gave him my background and who I was, because it was the day after they had acquired or announced the acquisition of Titan's projects which include the Rook project. If those of you who don't know Rook, Rook hosts Arrow. Anyway, in, in May of 2013, I was hired on with the company. I was hired on right after then VP Andy Brown. And immediately after me, we hired Matt Schwab. And the three of us together put together the, the drill programs that led to the Arrow discovery. And we used a lot of the same geophysics. We, we relied quite heavily on Arrow. Why do I really bring this about Arrow? Well, Arrow's got a 240 million pound probable reserve. That's a lot of value there. They've they've created 320 times, or they've increased their market cap 320 times in the past 11 years. That's huge. They've gone from a 22 million market cap all time low in 2013 to a 7 billion market cap, all because of this one wonderful deposit called Arrow. And it is, it's moving forward. It is the next the next uranium mine in Saskatchewan. So this, from a news release back in 2014, right after or during the discovery, I guess the, the, the discovery holes, hole 21, we just completed it. I think your eyes will probably pick up on that bullseye feature in the middle right here in that black circle as it rightfully should. However, what I want to pull your eyes towards is this image up above this more regional picture. Uh, up in the red circle. So I'm going to zoom in and things get a little bit blurry in here, but to help you see the perspective, I've drawn on those two purple lines and those identify a gravity high corridor where you typically have gravity high rocks. And then you've got a gravity low corridor. And along that margin within the gravity high side, I hope you can see these gravity lows. And there's one right here that we drilled and you can see all the drill holes around there and all the yellow. We hit a lot of alteration. We didn't hit any deposit that was anything like arrow though. And then we drilled the the that target up there and that yielded arrow you know history has changed after that so when i look at that i have that that image running in the back of my mind and that's what i'm looking for so when we say we're going to drill loki to kick kick things off it's not only because we've got this wonderful clay alteration with that that host uranium and in the sandstone when you find things like that typically you find unconformity style of deposits and when the geochem within the area really lights up with everything that that we use at base load as pathfinders, that looks like a really encouraging area to follow up. So we're going to zoom into Loki. This is the, the background gravity. Give you a few more seconds for your eyes to look for it, and I'm pretty sure you would have found it by now. There's the bullseye. Within that gravity low, gravity high corridor, there is a gravity low bullseye adjacent to a gravity low corridor. If I throw on Arrow as an example, hopefully you can make that comparison. To be honest, Arrow is a mirror image of the one that we're looking at, so I'll flip that over for you. Excuse me, I'll flip that over and maybe you can kind of see things a little bit better now. That these two anomalies look very much alike. And that's the potential that we're seeing on Aberdeen. That's why we think there's a lot of opportunity for drill successes to be made here. But it's better than that. That's Loki. Let's go up to this big this big area. It's they call it Mammoth. And rightfully so because it's it's a gravity low feature that's 10 to 20 kilometers long and wide. It's just this huge broad corridor. We're going to zoom into there. Give give you a few more seconds look for it. I'm pretty sure you found it. There it is. There's the bullseye within or along the edge of the gravity high to gravity low transition. Maybe your eyes also picked up on this one down here. Is that a third one? That's pretty cool. 
we throw an arrow just for that visual similarity. And I hope you can make the same visual comparisons that I can see that they're almost identical. And it's features like that, that really drew me to this area. This one in particular, I call the eye of Sauron just because I, it was really the first one that, that jumped out at me. And every time I look at it, I can't unsee it. I look at this map and I cannot unsee it. There we go. Look at it. Cannot unsee it. The Eye of Sauron exists. I look into it. It stares back into me. We have that synergetic relationship. But I see more of those on here. And that's that's the appeal to this. <laughs> look, if we can if we can discover multiple arrow style of deposits on this project, we can build a huge company. That's the goal behind this thing. There is so much potential on here and i don't even think the surface has even been scratched i think we can do a really strong job with our funding and partnership with forum to just nail discovery after discovery we have two drills on the go look if we make a discovery at loki we can keep both drills there what if we tested another area and this thesis works and we tested that mammoth area and make another discovery what if we have two arrow-like deposits on the go in this one drill season alone. It's a crazy idea to think about, but it's not impossible. I'm not guaranteeing success. I cannot guarantee success by drilling these targets. All I can do is show the similarities and hope that there is mineralization down there. But there are other things that really correlate with these areas that just make it all jive the same way it did with, with arrow. Have we abandoned Athabasca 2.0? You better believe we have not. If anything, we've only strengthened it. Aberdeen, really, it, its focal exploration is up here in the, in the first 100 meters. Even with sandstone covers, it's a thin sandstone cover, and we're still looking for those mineable deposits. Aberdeen is ripe for that. So we have not abandoned Athabasca 2.0. If anything... And I don't want to dump on the clay alteration area because I feel more convinced than ever there is a discovery waiting to be down there. But as, as, as I said in another presentation, we do have to go deeper. And that's what those red lines indicate. We have to go deeper. If I draw on a, a vertical depth, that blue line there from the surface to the end of that slide is 500 meters. So our target range is 400 to 500 meters from surface. What that really does then is it puts us into this range. We're, we're, we're away from that open pit style of mineralization that we're looking for. We're not in a bad place because the, the arrow deposit, you know, the high grade A2 deposit at arrow is basically around these depths. A lot of great mineralization at Eagle Point is around these depths. So we're, we're in this right range of where we want to be depth wise and all of the alteration in this area keeps keeps beckoning and and well it keeps it's encouraging <laughs> no other way to put it it's very very encouraging great place to go to in the winter when you can't drill aberdeen in the winter what if we make a discovery at hook we've now just created a a, a We've created a company that has the potential for multiple discoveries within the next six to nine months. That's the lucrative appeal. That's where we build this thing and really get it going. That's my vision behind this whole thing. Baseload Energy is part of the ore group. Geiger will be part of the ore group because I think we're just, I think we are awesome at what we can do and really build with this. Baseload's been very successful behind the ore group. And I think Geiger will be even more successful. That's the story. That's the dream. That's the forward-looking statements. Thanks for watching. If you don't know, I'm really passionate about this. I am 100% behind this thing. Uh, I am. I just want to. I just want to see some big hits come out of this, and I think we've got the ability to do so. Cheers, everybody.